opportunities. Now I would like to introduce our uh, speaker today, Brandy Armstrong, the Vice President of Professional Activities, IEEE Ocean Engineering Society. She is staff physical oceanographer at the University of Southern Mississippi in Marine Science Modeling Group and working towards her PhD in Marine Science Program. She specializes in running the coupled ocean atmosphere wave sediment transport modeling system and is currently working on developing a model to study the impact of freshwater diversion on its is student system. Brandy uh, Armstrong uh, completed a five year combined BES and MS in marine science program from University of South Carolina, Carolina and uh, is currently working on her PhD at USM prior to starting her position at USM in two zero, uh, 2019. She was a research uh, um, Oceanographer with U.S. Geological Survey Coastal Marine Geology Program in Woodhole, and uh, where she specialized in ocean modeling and instrumentation. Later, the manager of USGS Hydrologic Instrumentation Facility Hydrolog Hydraulics Laboratory. She is the vice president of prof professional activities for the IEEE Ocean Engineering Society. 2020 and 2021 and ensuring that uh, young professional and women in engineering are an integral part of society conference leadership and the planning. Now we would like to love to hear from you ma'am. Thank you for again for the lovely introduction. I'm going to go through um, a very short presentation about my career path in STEM. And I'm going to follow that up with what I'm working on now and some information about opportunities with the IEEE OES and USM. So this title is meant to be to make it's meant to make you think, right? There is no career path in STEM. Um, so whether you're a student or an early career professional, I bet a lot of you are currently contemplating your career path, right? So early on, I was introduced to this idea that you could choose a right career path. And if you could choose your right career path, then logically there's also a wrong career path, right? And so this is something that was introduced to me very early on, and it was before I had any good idea what I wanted to be when I grow up, right? I was just very early in my college career. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. Um, so the idea of the right career path was reinforced by my advisor, my first advisor, who told me that they didn't think what I had, I had what it takes, right? You don't have what it takes. You're not going to make it. That's what they told me which is um, kind of a horrible thing to hear when you're uh, just an undergraduate. So at the time, I didn't know it. Um, I didn't know what it was, right? I wasn't going to make it. I didn't even know what it was. I hadn't chosen what my it was. So this experience left me wondering if I was already on the wrong career path, if I would made the wrong choice for you know what I was studying in college. But this was just the uh, beginning of a very long transformation for me. Oh, there it goes. So I switched advisors and graduated from South Carolina Honors College with the highest distinction. But even though I had done so well in college, I came out thinking, who am I? Right. Um, I didn't identify as an ex expert in my field of study. I didn't understand how I, I mean, like I didn't have a concept of myself and what my skills were. Right. So every step along the way, I did more than was asked of me, but I still didn't identify as an expert in my field. So instead of career success, I found a series of jobs with no potential for growth opportunity or for learning. And so these soul sucking jobs um, were combined with at the time of an ill fated verbally abusive relationship. And I ended up with strong feelings of inadequacy, which many people know as imposter syndrome. And so I always felt like I was not good enough. So three years out of graduate school, I found myself feeling like a phony. I was working outside of oceanography in sort of a dead end job. And I was, you know, in my mind, I was well on my way down the wrong career path. But this was just the beginning of, you know, again, learning an important lesson. So when you're faced with adversity, you just have to keep swimming. I don't know if you guys have watched Finding, uh, Finding Dory, right? But her, her motto is just keep swimming. 
So I can tell you at that point in my career, I didn't have any plan. Um, but some things happen by chance. Some of the best things happen by chance. And so in what I thought was a desperate, underqualified straw grasp, I applied to and interviewed for and was hired for a postdoc position in the with the U.S. Geological Survey in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. And at the time, of course, I did not have my doctorate, so I was very pleased to get this position. And I felt like I was faking it to make it, but I was certain that if there was a right career path for an oceanographer, then Woods Hole was definitely on it. Um, and for those of you that don't know, and you may know, uh, Woods Hole is one of you know three big oceanographic centers right in the United States, and it's probably one of the most well-known, aside from Scripps. So at the time, what I thought I'd found is the right place, right? I'm in Woods Hole. This is the best place. Um, but what I actually found were the right people, right? My mentors, they spent time helping me develop new skills. They encouraged me to think about my career and to take advantage of networking opportunities that were offered by conferences and professional societies. They also encouraged me to define what career success looked like. So at this time, I was joining the IEEE OES. I became the WE liaison. You know, I sort of was moving up the ranks and getting more involved. I became part of ADCOM. Um, so this was all, you know, all learning leadership skills and how to uh, work with other people and network and, you know, decide what my career was going to be for me. So once I decided that I was going to define my own career success, I came to this unfortunate realization that I had to leave the position in this amazing location where I had lots of support and great mentorship because the position couldn't meet my expectations for career advancement. And so uh, a family situation dictated that I would have to move to the Mississippi Gulf Coast. And I didn't know much about it before I got here, but it actually has one of the largest concentrations of oceanographers in the world. And so my, you know, with my newly formed and still evolving definition of success, I was able to, you know, see this in a new light, um, but there were still quite a lot of obstacles to finding a good position, right? Because now I had some idea of what I was looking for, right? I had an idea of what success should look like. But I started to learn yet another important lesson, which was when we define success as helping others to succeed, we all find success. So I networked my way into two job offers and going by the career path model, I would have been tempted to say I picked the wrong job, right? I picked the wrong path, but I had already decided that success was mine to define. So I, I took this job as a hydrologist with the hydrologic instrumentation facility. I was managing their hydraulics laboratory. Um, we were testing instrumentation that, that USGS has a, the surface water of USGS has a huge a huge amount of instrumentation. They're collecting freshwater data from all the rivers in the entire United States. Um, so my job was basically to make sure that all that instrumentation was working properly, right, to create a system to test it on a regular basis, um, and then to test any new equipment that they would decide to use. So while I'm in this position, which is a very stable position and it pays well, right, it's a good government position, I chose to continue networking to find my dream job, right, to find the job that met my career advancement and work-life balance expectations. And during this time, I was able to continue volunteering with the IEEE Oceanic Engineering Society. I focused my networking and volunteering efforts on specifically providing opportunities to and mentoring students, women, and young professionals, locally and internationally. And this is how I learned that yet another important lesson, by contributing to the success of others, you will benefit from their knowledge. So this involvement kept me involved in oceanography at a time when my job did not provide me the opportunity to do so. And through my mentoring of students, women, and young professionals, I made the contacts at the University of Southern Mississippi, which is where I am now employed as a research scientist and earning my PhD. So in my current position at USM, I have the opportunity to earn my PhD while I continue working, which is really nice because it, it enables me to sort of double duty a lot of things, right? The things that I'm working on as my job also contribute to my PhD um, dissertation, right? I'm able to volunteer as a, a mentor to the USM student branch, right? And then I'm also, also able to do my work as the VP of professional activities for the IEEE OES, right? All of these things work together and I have a lot of support to continue doing the, the things that are important to me and the things that have, you know, helped me to create this career success. I'm also nearby my family and I'm able to maintain a work-life balance 
Um, so my, my daughter is very interested in science and she loves to go to the ocean and see the animals, right? And so she's very interested in what I do and, um, and it's nice to be able to you know, bring her to work and, and have that opportunity there. And I have some great mentors, um, Dr. Jerry Wigert, Dr. Kamal Kambazoglu, and Dr. Diana Bernstein are all in the ocean modeling group and we work together very closely. So what was the most important lesson I learned? And it's that you get to define what success means for you, right? Success is not found at the end of a path. You can't follow someone else's path. It is a mindset which enables you to make choices that result in peace of mind and self-satisfaction. So I created my own success and this funny little cartoon, right? Because if I had to draw success, I probably wouldn't do a very good job of it. Um, but I created my own success. I, I ditched this right, wrong career path mentality. And I recognized that there are a ton of ways that you can succeed. And so I defined what career success meant for me. I found and I became an active and positive mentor and role model and contributing to the success of my network so that I could benefit from these connections and develop leadership skills that help me to manage and harness some of that imposter sy syndrome energy, right? So I don't feel like an imposter anymore, um, at least not all the time, maybe every once in a while, but I, I feel, you know, I have some confidence, right? I'm able to help others succeed and, and through that, right, I'm able to see that I am successful. I also learned that I can't make a wrong career choice if I am making choices that are based on peace of mind and self-satisfaction, uh, that choice will provide me. Right, so I'm no longer worried about other people's idea of what success is, right? I'm only worried about my own idea of what success is and how it makes me feel right now that I'm satisfied with my choices. And I'm gonna give, before I ask for questions, I give a quick plug for the Oceanic Engineering Society, right? I'm currently the VP of Professional Activities, but I worked my way up through the society and I am able to make a lot of connections and network, right? And, and it's been very good for my career. Um, it, and it's also helped me to define again, what I think of as career success. And so I would encourage you to get involved. We have lots of opportunities to get involved in leadership, you know, running for ADCOM, running for, you know, applying for YP Boost. We're working on getting money to do We Propel, which would be a similar program to YP Boost where we would bring, you know, young women and supporters of young women into society leadership to make sure that we're addressing the needs of women in engineering. And so I encourage you to reach out to me um, or to anyone else, any of the other leadership at um, the Oceanic Engineering Society, and we'll get you involved. Um, there's also, we have, we do have social media money this year, so please go and check the website. We have defined a program this year of what we are able to spend that money on, All right? So if you need to earn some money for your student branch chapter or your local chapter, right, you can do that through the social media initiative. So please go and check that out. And then the University of Southern Mississippi has a lot of graduate student opportunities, postdoc opportunities that are constantly coming up. So please keep an eye out for that if you'd like to come and work with us. Um, I am in the ocean modeling group, but we also have um, a cat category A hydrographic school, right? Um, we have people working in biology and chemistry. It's very multidisciplinary. and. We're in a location where we have connections with the Naval Research Lab, with NOAA, with all of these big government agencies. And then there's also a lot of, you know, smaller um, nonprofits and things, right, that are doing good work, like the, the Water Institute of the Gulf, right? So there's a lot of great connections here. And like I mentioned earlier, that has one of the highest concentrations of oceanographers in the world on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. So if you're interested and you'd like to learn more about, you know, what the opportunities are here, you can, again, reach out to me and I can put you in touch with, with the correct people at USM to get you pointed in the direction you want to go. And so my name, again, is Brandy Armstrong, and I will take any questions. <laughs>